In the annals of true crime, there are cases that baffle investigators, captivate public attention, and leave lasting impressions on society. The murder of Ter Rada is one such enigma, a haunting mystery that continues to stir emotions more than a decade after it took place. The tragic events that unfolded in 2006 in a small Israeli town left everyone seeking answers, justice, and closure. Prepare yourself for a true crime journey like no other as we piece together the clues, unveil the secrets, and attempt to shed light on this tragic and enigmatic tale. In a big decision on Thursday, 2006, Roman Zadorov was found not guilty of the murder of a 13-year-old school girl named Terrada. This murder case shocked the whole nation of Israel and was widely discussed online and in the media. Zadorov had previously been convicted and spent more than 10 years in prison, but the new retrial overturned that conviction. The murder of Ter Rada took place in a school bathroom in a town called Katsrin, and it has been a topic of intense debate. Many people believe that Zadorov was not the real killer and that he had been wrongly convicted based on weak evidence, while some others were sure that the evidence pointed to him as the culprit, although it might not have been entirely conclusive. Ter Rada's family had been insisting that the wrong person was convicted, and they fought for years to bring new evidence to light. Finally, in 2021, it led to the decision to hold a retrial, and Zadarov was released on house arrest during that process. The verdict of the retrial was broadcasted live and sparked strong reactions from the public. A group of three judges in a court in Nazareth decided Zadarov. Two of the judges said he is not guilty, and one judge said he is guilty. Zadorov was very emotional and cried when he heard the decision. He felt relieved and happy because he believed that the truth came out, and now he can go out with his children. The judge's decision is written in a long document of about 700 pages. The people who were trying to prove Zadorov's guilt are now going to read the decision carefully and think about whether they want to challenge the not guilty verdict and take the case to the highest court called the Supreme Court. In 2006, a girl named Rada was found dead in the bathroom of her school in Katsrin. Located in the Golan Heights, she had cuts on her neck, stab wounds on her body, and severe injuries to her head. Shortly after the incident, a man named Zadorov, who was from Ukraine and worked temporarily at the school, was arrested and accused of killing Rada. Initially, he confessed to the murder and demonstrated how it happened but later he said that his confession was forced, and he took it back, stating that it included incorrect information. In 2010, after almost four years of being in custody, Zadorov was sentenced to life in prison by the Nazareth District Court. This decision was confirmed twice by the Supreme Court after separate appeals. Zadorov's lawyers and many people from the public strongly believe that he was falsely accused and that the real murderer was a woman named Ola Kravchenko. Her boyfriend at the time, Adir Habani, claimed years later that she confessed to him about the murder. In 2018, a DNA analysis was conducted on a hair found on Rada's body. The analysis indicated that the hair did not belong to Zadorov, but it could potentially match Habani, along with thousands of other possible matches. This brought back speculation about who was truly responsible for the killing. In 2019, Zadorov's lawyer, Yoram Halivi asked the Supreme Court to hold a new trial. He claimed that they had discovered a lot of new evidence that strongly proves Zadorov did not commit the murder. Judge Kula expressed concern that Zadorov's confession might not be true. He criticized the state prosecutors for not providing enough evidence to prove beyond a doubt that Zadorov committed the crime. The judge also mentioned that Zadorov is not a sadist or a pedophile and that he doesn't have a history of violent behavior. Judge Sarfetti ruled that Zadorov was under intense pressure since he was facing life in prison. This pressure made him confess to the crime, even if it wasn't true. The judge questioned why someone would commit murder at their workplace and leave behind a bag full of evidence. There were no witnesses who saw Zadorov leaving the scene covered in blood. He also questioned why Zadorov's shoes weren't soaked in blood. Considering all these doubts and questions, the judge concluded that the accuser failed to prove Zadorov's guilt 
and he should be declared innocent. In a different opinion, Judge Nissim Shai expressed some very different thoughts about the case. This shows that even experienced judges who have studied the same evidence and heard the same testimonies can have different views. According to her, Zadorov is definitely guilty. She believes his confession was very detailed and not forced by fear. In more recent testimonies, she noted that Zadorov contradicted himself and lied, even admitting to lying to previous judges. She also mentioned that he knew certain facts that only the real killer would know. Although she acknowledged that the evidence and investigation were not perfect, she still believes that not every uncertainty or unanswered question should lead to Zadorov being declared innocent. The judges didn't find enough evidence to strongly accuse Kravchenko. After the verdict was read, Judge Kula spoke to the victim's mother, Ilana Rada. He said they tried to solve the mystery, but it's possible that Tara, the victim, took her secret to her grave, meaning they may never know the whole truth. Ilana Rada, however, disagreed with the judge's statement. She was in tears and said the case isn't over. She believes that Ter didn't take her secret with her and that she was abandoned and brutally murdered. Yelana is determined to keep fighting for justice and won't let it go. She feels that after 16 years of lies, justice has finally been served, but she thinks the battle is just beginning. Ilana accuses the prosecution of covering up the truth and claims they essentially murdered her daughter again with their poor investigation and framing of Zadarov. She is determined to find the real murderers and get justice for her daughter. Politicians had strong reactions to the court's decision on the Zadarov case. Many of them pointed out the mistakes made by state prosecutors throughout the 16-year legal process and connected it to the current government's controversial attempt to drastically change the judiciary. Religious Zionism M.K. Sinka Rothman, who designed the judiciary overhaul, emphasized that the Zedorov trial's outcome has significant implications for the plan changes. He highlighted how the court's focus on determining the reasonableness of Zadorov's different statements and initial confession and its impact on his case mirrored a similar clause used by the High Court of Justice to invalidate the appointment of Shah's party leader, Arya Derry, as a minister. The government aims to limit this clause's application. Likud M.K. Ariel Kalner expressed his dissatisfaction with the court's ruling, stating that it adds to the list of injustices caused by a system lacking proper checks and balances. He pointed out selective enforcement and witness intimidation as some of the issues. Fellow Likud M.K. Tali Gottlieb called for a change in how indictments are focused on suspects' confessions, suggesting a shift away from relying solely on them. Yisrael Beatnew M.K. Yulia Malinovsky, from the opposition, viewed the exoneration as evidence of the urgent need for genuine reforms in the Israeli justice system and law enforcement. She criticized the government's efforts, which she sees as an attempt to manipulate the system for its own benefit. The murder of Ter Radar remains an unsolved puzzle to this day, haunting the hearts of those who remember. Despite the passage of time, her story continues to intrigue and challenge our understanding. If you found this video compelling, don't forget to like and share it with others who might be equally fascinated by true crime mysteries. Subscribe to our channel for more intriguing cases and unexplored enigmas that have shaped history. Until next time, stay curious and keep seeking the truth.